Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we are going to talk about the current divider rule. Before we do that, we're going to do a little trip through memory lane on the voltage divider rule. So if you haven't read about this in the book or you haven't looked at the video, make sure you do that first. So the key on the voltage divider rule is, when you have a bunch of resistors in series, the voltage for each resistor divides up proportionally to its resistance. The big resistors get a lot of voltage, the little resistors get very little. So all you have to do is create a little fraction, a proportion, between the thing you're interested in and all the resistors in that string. So if I want to find the voltage across R1, I simply make a, a ratio between R1 and all the resistors, and I just multiply that by the applied source. Right? So there you go, V of R1 is E times R1 over the sum of the three resistors. You want to find R2's voltage? Same deal, E over R2, right, times R2 divided by all those resistors. R3, it's R3 divided by all those resistors. So back to R1, right, I put 30 ohms in there, the three resistors, 30, 60, and 10, that's 100. So I'm basically saying I'm going to get 0.3 or 30% of my supply, which is 20, that's 6 volts, right? So I can do that with anything. It's, it's a very convenient sort of uh, rule because you're skipping a step, right? You know, the classical way of doing this is to add up all the resistors, get a total resistance, divide that into the voltage source, that gives you the current, then you can take that current and apply Ohm's law to the resistor and get the voltage. Same thing for R2, same thing for R3, or really any combination of resistors for that matter. But using the voltage divider rule, you skip a step. You don't actually calculate the current. You just go right in because you recognize the proportion. Is there something that we can do like that for current? Well, you know, if there wasn't, I wouldn't be doing the video, right? That's my old joke. So let's take this example. I've got a current source, I in, it's 6 amps, and I've got two resistors, R1 and R2, 30 ohms, 60 ohms. Now, classically, the way that you would approach this, right, the first way you learn how to do this is to first find out what the uh, equivalent parallel resistance is. What's 30 in parallel with 60, right? You could use product sum rule, for example. Um, and once you have that, you could then take the current, use Ohm's law, which would then produce the voltage. And the one thing about a parallel circuit we know is that voltage everywhere in the parallel circuit is the same. So once I've got the voltage, I can take that potential and divide it by the resistor of interest, like if I want to find I1 over here, right? take that voltage, divide it by 30 ohms, and they'll give me the current. Same thing over here for R2. Take the voltage divided by R2, you get the current. All right? That's classically the way we do it. But current divider rule is going to do the same kind of thing that we did with voltage divider rule. We're going to essentially skip a step. And the key here is that for parallel resistors, you've got a whole bunch of parallel resistors, right? Current divides proportionally to the conductance, not the resistance. So the resistors with high conductance get the large current. The other way of saying that, of course, is high conductance means low resistance. So low resistance, like this 30 compared to the 60, this should get more current than the larger resistance value. So how do we figure out, you know, a, a, a nice formula like we had for the uh, divider rule, right? Well, here we go. If it divides up in proportion with the conductance, and I want to find, let's say, the current through the first resistor, right, I1. So I'm interested in finding, you know, what the heck is this? That's I1. That's supposed to divide up in appropriate proportion to conductance. So we could say that I, I have my input current, right, I in, or I'll just call it I here to save a little space. The conductance of R1, I'm just going to call G1. And that's divided by the total conductance, which of course would be G1 plus G2. Of course, I don't have the conductances, I have the resistances, but I do know that the conductance is just the reciprocal, all right? So what's the reciprocal um, value that we have over here for G, G1? Well, that's equal to 1 over R1. And, you know, 
I'll just repeat that down here. And the same is true for G2, right? That's one over R2. All right, now I don't know about you, but when I see this, I see a built up fraction made out of built up fractions. You know, that sort of wounds my, my sense of aesthetics. That screams to me, simplify. This is ugly. So how do I simplify this? Well, I can just multiply through by R1, R2. All right, so when I multiply through, there's my I1, my input current. So when I multiply through, right, R1, R2 times 1 over R1, that just turns into R2. All right, same thing in the denominator out here. And then when I multiply 1 over R2 by that, right, the R2s disappear and we just end up with R1. All right. So, this appears to be very similar to the voltage divider, except for one really important thing. And that is, it's the opposite resistor, right? If I'm interested in the current through R1, I am actually looking at, in my equation, the other resistor, R2. All right? So, I'm going to put 60 in there, 60, and then 60 plus 30, 90, in the denominator. So 60 over 90 is 2 thirds. I is 6 amps. 6 amps times 2 thirds is 4 amps. So I would expect 4 amps for my I1. Now you could at this point use uh, Kirchhoff's current law and say, well, I got 6 coming in, there's 4, so what's left over is 2. Okay. Or you could just reapply this. You know, if I'm going to do the uh, I2 version of this, this would wind up with the opposite resistor, R1. And we would wind up with 30 over 90. You want to get one third of six, of six, which would get me two, right? Either way you want to do it. But, you know, we can always come up here and do a real quick check on this. Let's bring this over here. Get my little probe out. So there's the arrow as expected, four amps like we wanted. And for our two, two amps, hey, that looks great, okay? Um, notice this is telling us we have 120 volts, which is what we would have gotten in the classical method. We would have taken uh, 30 in parallel with 60, which would be 20 ohms. All right, that's a 2 to 1 ratio, so we'd get 2 thirds of the smaller. 2 thirds of 30 is 20. Product sum rule, same deal. All right, you're going to get up uh, 20 ohms. So we'd have 6 amps times 20 ohms, which would be 120 volts. So I know there's 120 volts across here. 120 divided by 60 ohms is 2 amps. 120 volts divided by 30 is going to get us 4 amps, right? However you want to do it. All right. So at this point, we have an equation for two parallel resistors. That's the current divider rule for two parallel resistors. What do we do? Because this is what everybody asks, right? Well, what if we have three, right? What if I have not two, but three? So I've got, uh, tell you what, let's change color down here. I've got a third resistor out here. I'm not going to put a value in. I'm just going to say, hey, I got an R3. Now, a lot of people will look at this equation and just say, well, I'd probably just add, you know, my R3 in here like I did with the voltage divider. Uh-uh. Doesn't work. This is really important. That doesn't work. Besides, here's, a, here's an easy way to remember it. How would you determine the other resistor when there's two of them? right? Okay, so how do we expand this out? I mean, what ends up happening? Well, you know, this is still true. Current divides proportionally to the, to the conductance. So if I want to find I1, right, if I want to find I1, I still have G1, the item of interest, but now it's over the total, which includes, right, this new resistance, or in our case, this new conductance of G3. I have to throw that in here. So that's going to add a term in here of 1 over R3. Oh, yeah, that's even worse for my sense of aesthetics. And to get rid of those, I'm going to have to multiply through by R1, R2, R3. Now look at what's happening. R1, R2, R3 times 1 over R1. This thing turns into R2 times R3 in the, in the numerator. 
And then down here, you multiply that, we're going to get our 3R2 for the first term. And then for the second term, we're going to get an R1, R3. And then we have to add on a third term, right, which is going to be R1, R2. And that is a mess, right? That's a mess. I don't like that at all. Why don't I like that, he said. I don't like that because, well, quite simply, it's more work. I mean, this is way more work than, than just going, going about it the original way. You know, let me put these three resistors in parallel. Use the current, find the voltage, divide out, use Ohm's law. What the heck is going on here? This is really error prone. Right? And you don't get bonus points for just doing things the hard way. What happens if you add a fourth resistor? Well, guess what? R4 out here, this is, you're going to have an R4 term. Then you're going to have another term out here. Each one of these is going to have three resistors in it. And, then, and you're going to have a fourth term with three resistors in it. This is just a mess. It's an absolute mess. Right? So you don't, you don't want to try and approach this this way. This, this is just crazy. All right, sometimes you will see in a book, you will see something called the current divider rule, right? You might see a video on this, or like I said, a book, and they'll say, oh, um, you know, for some particular current, I won, what you do is it's the entering current times R, and I'm just going to call this EP, divided by the resistor of interest, right? It's a nice compact little equation. You know, what's REP? Well, it's the equivalent parallel resistance. In other words, in this case, it would be the parallel equivalent of these three resistors, right? 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Take the reciprocal of that, all right? Or you could do, you know, product sum rule a couple of times, whatever floats your boat. But it's the equivalent resistance of that thing, right? Three resistors, four resistors, however many you have. So you take that and you make this little... Um, ratio here with, with the resistor of interest, in our case R1, multiply it by the input current, and bingo, you get your, your, your current in the, in the branch of interest. All right, I will admit it's, it's compact, right? It's a compact little equation, but this is nothing. I mean, think about this for a sec. The original way you would do this, right, without using the current divider rule, the original way you would do it would be to find the equivalent resistance multiply by the current to get the voltage and then you would take the voltage and divide by the resistor that you were interested in finding the current through that's exactly what this is right you got your resistance this is the equivalent resistance times the current this is the voltage and then you just divide by the resistance so this is nothing special this is what you're going to do anyway so here's the bottom line all right, the bottom line is that, let me clean this up here a little bit. The bottom line is that this current divider rule really only works for two resistors. All right, so I'm going to simplify this for you. Get over there. That's it. You got two parallel resistors. The current divider rule simply says it's the entering current times the opposite resistance over the sum, right, over the total. So you want I of R1, use R2 on top. You want I of R2, use R1 on top. That's it. There isn't a version of this for three that's easy, right? There is a version, but it's kind of crazy, and you wouldn't want to use it because it's just more work, right? Great. So sadly, it's not quite as broadly applicable as the voltage divider rule, but it's still useful. Right? It's still useful. It's a good thing to have um, in the kit bag, as they say. So, any questions, leave them in the comments. And with that, I'll say, have a good one.